Where innovation and technological advancement strive, there is a growing community of individuals who dare to break free from the ordinary, seeking the perfect union between personal expression and productivity. Armed with tools and unwavering determination, I set out to create a keyboard like no other. I designed this keyboard to take the contour of my hand and embrace my every keystroke with the utmost comfort. A keyboard that not only enhances my typing experience, but becomes an extension of my personality and creativity. From its ergonomic benefits to the aesthetic allure, this is a testament of my desire to be different and unconventional. Not to talk about opening the gates to ridiculous laziness. Because yes, this keyboard was designed to perfectly fit my comfy chair. I'm Max from Lifehacker Max and in this video I will show you how I made this one of a kind LHM32 split keyboard. It's 90% handcrafted and so I'm taking the opportunity to share with you my whole process as well as my train of thoughts and I hope this will give some of you an idea or two when it comes to prototyping anything you desire building. And not only keyboards but other electronics as well, cases or whatever gadgets or mechanical gizmos you are trying to build. This unique split keyboard emerged from the LHM Morph platform, a platform that I designed for a full customization of a keyboard, ensuring optimal ergonomics by making tenting, tilting, rotating and sliding the keys adjustable. I made another video about the Morph platform and if you are curious about it, check the link in the description and watch that video as well. The frame itself was meticulously handcrafted to perfectly align with the handrest of my chair. Moreover, it was designed with adjustability in mind, accommodating users of varying arm lengths. I started by adding cyanoacrylate between the bottom modules in order to build up material that will connect the pieces to one another. So I did this until the bond was strong enough to hold the modules together without the need of the main board. The cyanoacrylate I'm using is a gel-like super glue that comes with a hardening spray that cures the glue almost instantly. On the thumb cluster I use the glue gun because the space between each module is bigger. The results are similar with the exception that the bond is flexible and not as strong as with the super glue. That is not a concern for me as I only need the connections to hold until I make the case which will hold everything together. In order to move to the next step, build the case and fit everything inside, I had to redo all the wiring, and so I took everything apart. After I connected all the pieces together, I removed the main board and reinforced the connection some more where it was needed. What you are seeing right now is actually the second half of the keyboard, where I took apart the two clusters separately in order to connect them in symmetry with the first one. What I did with the first half that I didn't get to film was to connect the two clusters before I took apart the main board in order to keep the angles as they were set up initially. Now this is the first part of the keyboard, and as you can see, all the clusters are linked together. To figure out the right position of the keyboard on the armrest, I fix the keys with some tie wraps on the chair and improvise the razor from some textile material just to get a sense of what it feels like. Whenever I'm creating something new, I like to prototype based on how it feels and test my creation every step along the way to make sure the outcome is what I imagine it to be. Even though this process can be questionable at times, and I will explain later, it is my creative process and I get the desired results in the end. I like to do this because I can course correct in case something doesn't feel right. I'm a bit destructive in my creative process in the sense that I usually work with the pieces that will interact with my project. In this case I used the exact chair as a guide and I drew lines with my pencil on it, I made signs on it, I even used the super glue while the keyboard was on the frame.
After deciding on a right angle, I used the chair frame as a guide for building the frame around it. For this step, I used some barbecue sticks and super glue, which turned out to be a great idea that I think I'm going to be using in my future projects. The wood is strong enough to build a rigid frame, light enough to make it suitable for my build and easy to work with. Cut, sand and glue. As an alternative, I could have used some thick copper wire, but the wire is flexible and could deform over time. And also the copper structure would have been heavier than the wooden frame. As a tip for when you are disassembling stuff, take pictures before taking the thing apart so you can check back in case you forget what goes where. This is particularly useful when you work with electronics and have to keep tabs on wiring connections. For the second part, I built the frame using the first build as a reference. It was a bit easier to build as I already knew what had to be done. The hard part was to copy the shape of the first frame. So this time I had to build a frame relying more on measurements rather than based on how it feels. Keep in mind that the two halves are not exactly alike. I made the thumb cluster the same, yes, but the rest of the buttons are positioned differently for each hand. Also one half will hold a battery module while the other will hold a microcontroller. At this point I didn't exactly know how the case will end up looking. I didn't even know if I could fit the electronic board inside the frame I'm building. Happily, I managed to fit the board inside, and as a bonus I made a slider for it in case something breaks and I need to replace it.
When I built the frame I wanted to make it in such a way that I could also use the keyboard on a flat surface. This was one of the requirements that guided the design of the framing case. And this is me testing it after 12 hours of work, full of joy and excitement right after I successfully installed the keyboard for the first time on my chair. And you hitting that like button would really really put a smile on my face. So here we are, a fully functional keyboard that has undergone months of testing. The only missing piece? The aesthetics. To me aesthetics are just as important as functionality. So let's transform this keyboard into something visually appealing. Once I finished building the frame, installed the electronics in their place and tested out the keyboard for a couple of months, I got a basic idea on how the final case will look like. I am using some air hardening clay for this process. The main plan is to build on the frame structure, fill in the blanks while giving the case an organic look and make the battery and electronics accessible. When I'm forming the case I'm not exactly sure what it will look like. I'm letting the functionality factor determine the main design. In product design as well as architecture, this principle is known as functional design or form follows function and is a principle of design which states that the shape of a building or object should primarily relate to its intended function or purpose. Some of the functionality factors that guided the design of my case are The case can be mounted on the frame of the chair and it will slide back and forth to accommodate for different arm lengths. As a bonus I will be able to install it on other chairs as well to offer more flexibility in case I wish to use another type of chair. It will be safe for sitting and getting up from the chair. No rough corners. It will be usable on a normal desk as well. It has to be as small as possible. It will allow access to electronics. I will build an access lead to the battery and the electronic board. Now, you may wonder why I chose to make everything by hand instead of opting for a 3D printed case. Well, there are a few reasons. Firstly, this keyboard is so custom that every button module is placed at different angles and lengths. Transposing all those measurements into a 3D model would have been a complex task. Secondly, I usually choose handcrafting for the sheer enjoyment of it. I love the process of sculpting, carving and modeling. And whenever I have the chance I choose the path of handcrafting, even though it's often longer and more challenging. Leaving my personal touch on projects is something I truly cherish, a way to infuse my personality into each creation. This handmade journey is not exclusive to those with 3D printers, even if you don't have access to one, you can still embark on this endeavor and build something remarkable. I'm adding and taking away as I go to make sure that the final case will be functional as well as it will look good on my chair. And here is where I decided to make the guide for the chair frame the exact dimension. Initially the idea was to leave the space wider in order to allow for freedom of choice when it comes to installing the keyboard on a chair and allow for the keyboard to be adjusted inwards or outwards. This was a decision where I compromised the functionality factor in favor of the design. But also installing it inside the sitting space raised the problem because my clothes could get caught on the frame. So here I decided to cut a little bit from the frame because I didn't like the way it made the whole case look too bulky.
Whenever I'm not certain what I need to do next, I take a break, let the clay harden and start filing and sanding. This helps me get a better sense of how it looks, where I need to add more material and what needs to be adjusted. And here is another one of those moments when my work ethic will raise some questions between some of you. And yes, I can agree as well that this is not the best way to do some of the things I'm doing, like filling my electronics with dust when sanding, and I hope you will find a better way to do it when working on your projects. But this is the way I'm doing things, and you have to keep in mind that this is only a prototype, and not the final product. Remember the first Iron Man that Tony Stark built? And if I was to build a keyboard with the intention of selling it, I would keep this as a sample and use it to properly build a final product. For example, I could build a mold for the case and make the final product from resin, paint everything and then install the buttons, electronics and wiring free of dust and debris. I did take into account the fact that I might ruin the buttons by sanding and painting everything with them installed, and I can replace them if I need to, but as it happens, they ended up working very well. I decided to leave the bottom part open so I can access the wiring in case I have to repair or redo something in the future. But I did however build a sturdy bridge in the middle, which I will use for installing the keyboard on the chair as you will see further along in the video. The bridge also acts as a guide for the wooden frame of the chair. Now I'm starting to prepare the keyboard for the lid that will allow access to the electronics inside the keyboard. I started up by filling the space inside with some aluminium foil that I can easily shape and it will be easy to remove once the lint hardens. And then I used some plasticine to give it a nice shape. This one is exactly what my kids are using at school. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I snitched this from the kids when they were not looking. When I'm doing this, I have to make sure that the lid will be thick enough in order for it not to break. And if with plastic cases the thickness of the parts are from 1.5 to 3 mm depending on the application, that is not the case with the clay I'm using as it has different properties. And just to be sure, I went with about 5 mm. I covered everything with a bit of hand cream to prevent the lid from sticking to the case. I could have used the aluminium foil as I did with the custom controller, but I wanted to test and show you other alternatives to doing the same thing. There is a special wax that is used to prevent the clay from sticking, but my purpose here is to reduce the necessity of industrial materials by replacing them with household items. This way the whole process will become accessible for more people. After the lead part hardened and before unsticking it from the main body, I filed and sanded it to the desired shape first. This way I make sure that the whole shape keeps the same lines, and it also helps me get the lead unstuck much easier.
After that I drilled some holes and used wood screws for mounting the leads. For this I had to add some additional material on the inside of the case. For installing the keyboard onto the chair's handrest, I made a clamp-like system that allows the keyboard to slide back and forth across the wooden frame until it's secured. I started by making a threaded hole in the bridge underneath the case. I did this with a tool called a hand tap. You can do this on all sorts of materials, and usually a standard hand tap system is done with three hand taps that come in a kit. You drill a smaller hole and then you use the hand taps in a certain order to make the thread. What I learned is that if you are working with plastic or acrylic boards, you are better off using only the first two bits, as it will make the thread tighter and will also hold better in time. For the clamp I used a piece of metal that I had laying around and looked like a good fit. To be honest, the metal clamps were a happy accident. They are designed for installing rails on the ceiling for vertical window blinds. And it just so happens that I had some laying around the house. Turned out to be the best shape for pressing onto the wooden frame. After all this I added some paint, made some custom keycaps and voila! I present to you the new and revolutionary LHM32 split keyboard, better yet the lazy keyboard. I think this keyboard has great potential as a future alternative when it comes to ergonomics and unconventional work or gaming spaces. I'm Max from Lifehacker Max and if you have any questions feel free to leave me a comment. If you like this video click the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.